Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to get started here. Welcome everybody to um, Digital Literacy Workshop. This is our second to the last of the school year. It's getting that time. Um, we're going to do some fun stuff with Take Your Students on Virtual Field Trips today. Um, right before this, I was actually buying a ticket to Alaska, and now here I am going on a virtual field trip. And you should have got an email with um, the link to the collaborative notes, and I'm going to pull that over here so you can see what it looks like. So our collaborative notes, um, at the top you'll see um, a link to the archive, which is where I will post the um, video that should be recording right now, and then also the presentation slides, and they're going to be pretty important for this one. Um, I've got more to cover than I can do in 20 minutes, so you can go back and explore further. Also in the in the um, in these notes, there's going to be a lot of links to some cool things that we won't get a chance to explore. So um, this will be a quick, oh, it's scratchy I hear. Let's see, how can I make it not scratchy? Let me give this a try. I'm going to do a sound check real quick. Okay, go back over here. I'm going to where I wanted to go. I told you I just bought a plane ticket. This is where I want to be. Okay, um, moving on. Oh, Tracy says she can manage. Okay, I'm sorry it's scratchy. I don't know why set up just the same. Okay, so we're on go to meeting. I don't think I have any new people with me this time, so um, I'm just going to skip through that. Uh, we're going to be looking at, I actually did uh, a similar presentation at NCCE, and so I'm using a lot of those same slides for this um, thing, and like I said, the presentation at NCCE was longer, so I'm going to have to jump through some things, and you can, you can explore further. So our targets are to look at field trip opportunities, and so I'm going to share some different places that you can find them and the ideas of how you can integrate these into your lessons and um, some ideas about how to create your own virtual field trips and how to add real life to the virtual field trips. So this is one of those things that I'm going to skip through, but this video is really cute. I, actually, I might play just a second of it. So what they've done is they're using Google Street View to um, take a trip around, uh, take a trip across the country. And I know you can't hear this right now, so I'm just gonna. So they're going from Chicago to Los Angeles on Street View, and then they're just gonna start going like that. It's really kind of fun to watch, but I'm gonna keep moving on. Moving on, so the idea when we're working with um, virtual field trips, you know, there's a million reasons to do it. Just basically um, give, our, give our kids um, opportunities to get beyond the classroom and see things that they wouldn't get to see. And some of them, it's stepping back in history. Sometimes it's going to other planets or something like that. So there's a lot of reasons why we would want to do this with our students. Um, here's a few things. Um, um, that you could do if uh, one one reason to do a virtual field trip is to actually visit a place you are going to physically visit later. So, for instance, if you were going to go to um, Seattle on a field trip, before you go, you could um, look at the Seattle Aquarium. You could um, use Google Street View and show different places in Seattle, and then you can have um, students talk about. I wonder, you know, from what they see. What are they going to see when they get there? And you can talk about safety rules, you know, about where you cross the street and things like that. So you can set the stage with a virtual field trip. So this is what it's going to be like when we get there. Um, look on Google Earth and see the area and talk about um, what you're going to see. The other thing you can do when you return is you can take a closer look. Now that you've been there, that's a great time. How many of us love to take a look at, like, Google Earth? 
to take a look at our own house or our school and we can see things in a different way. Well, the same thing if you go to Seattle and then you come back and you use Street View, you're going to have these great conversations because everybody saw it differently and you can have those conversations when you get back. Um, lots of great literacy opportunities with field trips. Um, I wonder books, observation journals, um, um, using, using a virtual field trip, you could do something like um, um, have the kids, maybe you're at the White House, and so they've got the video and stuff at the White House. You could actually have the kids jump into the scene, so put their picture on top of the, the picture of what they're seeing, and they could talk about what they're seeing. So there's a lot of different things you can do like that with virtual field trips to make them more real to the students. And speaking of making it real, um, if, you're, if you're going to participate in a, in a field trip with your students, now some of these are very planned out, and some of them might just be spur of the moment. The kids ask a question and you pull up something to, to help them understand what, uh, what they're learning in class. But some of them you could really, you could really go all out. So you could um, bring in some artifacts from the area, like for instance if you're learning, and I've got this lion here, so I'll say um, if we were learning, uh, reading a story about Africa, we could bring in some African artifacts, we could play African music, maybe some food, some different sounds to go along. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'll share with you, um, there's actually an AfriCam where they've got um, cameras at different game parts in, in Africa. And you could um, actually go in and see that, but have all this other real stuff in your classroom as well to help set the scene. Um, a great way to do um, virtual field trips are webcams and so there's some um, nice things about it. It's real time so you can see what's happening right at the moment. Um, it's behind the scenes. Oftentimes what you see in a webcam like in an aquarium or something like that is something that um, is not available. If you went to the aquarium you wouldn't get the same view as if, you, if you're looking at the webcam. Um, I've got an example I'll share with you right now because it's not in the slideshow. So, um, well, oh, there we go. This eagle's nest here. I'm gonna. So this is the Decora eagles, and they were famous a few years ago. But this um, eagle, I'm gonna let it go for a minute and come back to it. When the eagles start chirping, I'll let you know. But anyway, um, we have eagles nests around here. Here we go. Oh, that's a that it. That's a commercial. Um, we have eagles nest around here, but we can't get up and see inside of them. And uh, with a webcam, you can actually do that. The other thing is unexpected sights. So if you're looking at a webcam um, at one of the colleges or at a downtown place or something like that, or even one of the, the wild animal uh, webcams, you may see um, a leopard come and attack a um, ibex or something. And maybe you don't want your kids to see that, but you don't, you know you're going to see you're going to see real things and unexpected. The other thing about webcams um, that I have found in doing all this research is, first of all, you have to remember if you're looking at the other side of the world, it's going to be dark, and so if you're looking at a webcam, you need to think about the time. And then also, um, um, webcams go up and down all the time, so you need to be ready for that. Um, things like if you're looking at a nest or if you're looking at otters or anything like that, if it, if it really is a live webcam, it's very possible you're not going to see anything in the time that you wanted to um, see it. So if you just pulled up the webcam and you're going to do a lesson on otters and the otters are sleeping, you know, you just need to be prepared for that. <laughs> so. Um, those are things that you need to, uh, webcams are good things to visit back often and not spend like a whole day looking at them, but just kind of to get a glimpse into what's going on. Okay, I'm going to jump over here and see if I can see those eagles now. There they are. So these um, are eagles, I believe they're in Iowa, and there they are on, in the nest. The babies are waiting for the mom, and this is real time right now. So that would be a fun thing to check in with your class every day and take a look at the eagles and talk about how they're growing and uh, like I said earlier about wonder statements, I wonder why that one's laying like that and these two are up and you'd have all kinds of conversations like that. 
Okay, so webcams are really fun. Here's a couple of examples. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, beluga whales, um, thanks to Rafi. And if you go to the Vancouver Aquarium, you can see the baby, well, not just the baby belugas, all of the belugas um, at, the, um, at the aquarium doing whatever the belugas are doing. And um, if I jump back over here to, lost it. Where is it? Maybe yeah, it's over here. To my collaborative notes, you'll see that um, I've got a couple of different uh, ones like that. So the Vancouver Aquarium, the San Diego Zoo, the National Zoo, they all have some nice animal cams um, to take a look at. Monterey Aquarium has one as well. This one's kind of fun, the Animal Planet. Um, just take a look here. Animal Planet has um, a kitten cam and a puppy cam, hedgehogs, cockroaches, all kinds of things that you can jump in and take a look at the different ones. And again, they're live, so you see what's happening with them right then. And this is the AfriCam, and remember it's dark in Africa, which is actually kind of cool. To, um, some of the cameras go offline at night. I'm going to turn the, the this off. Um, some of the cams go dark at night. Sorry, I don't need to see my... Ah! <laughs> Try that again. Some of the cams go dark at night, but there's some that you can see at night. And it's kind of cool to hear the African savanna at night, just hear the sounds. And you can see the animals as well. <laughs> Tracy's watching belugas. Yay! Oh, a heron webcam here in Skagit County. So yeah, if you can put that on there, um, Eva, that would be excellent. If you, could, if you can find that and put it on our thing, that would be great. Okay. And then this one is actually, there's, um, there's a... Um, a um, long-haul driver named Big Steve, and he actually um, has a webcam on his big rig, and wherever he's going, he blogs about it, and he also has, um, has his camera set up, so kids can follow along and map where Big Steve is going. Currently, he's in, um, in San Antonio, and it said that the, he's on, on a break right now until, I think, the 21st of May, so right now there's nothing interesting to see there. But that would be a fun thing to kind of map out with Big Steve and where he's going. There's a lot of interactive tours, and I'm just going to pop into one here. So this is the Smithsonian, and you can actually click on this um, panoramic virtual tour. So this isn't a live camera, but you can um, go around the Smithsonian Natural History Museum and go into the different rooms and see all the animals. So that's kind of cool to play around with and um, explore the museum. Lots of museums to explore in that way. Um, you'll see they're exploring Mars and the solar system. You can do that at the Sp Supreme Court too. If you take a look at the list I have, there's uh, a lot more there. This is something, this is, um, you know, Nat Nature Valley um, granola bars. They have, um, they have gone and done, let's see if I can get this to work. Um, you can pick a park and actually hike through the park on different trails. I still hear the eagles tweeting or whatever eagles do. So if I click on here, I can actually um, go on the trail. And it'll pop up here in a minute. It's not showing very clear right now. And I can change the speed, and I can actually make it go faster, so and it will actually just start taking me on the trail itself, just walking through the Grand Canyon. That's kind of a fun one. Going back here. And then another um, great 
thing to do with virtual field trips is actually co uh, connect with another class or connect with a speaker or a scientist or something like that. And there's some great ways to do that. There's Skype in the classroom. Um, and you can connect with other teachers on different projects or with authors of books and things like that. Connected Classroom uses, um, uses Google Hangouts to do the same thing. And I know Lisa Condren has been um, connecting with teachers using Google, um, Connected Classrooms a lot. I'm going to click on here because Connected Classrooms actually has... Uh, um, they actually plan out different field trips and you can jump in and be a part of those. And so like tomorrow there's one natural National Geographic Kids Engineering and it's an actual webinar and they'll be talking to kids in classrooms and um, and they have an actual event happening there. Speaking of that, another one that's coming up tomorrow, which is very soon, is this one here. This came in my email today. And right now it's not showing anything. There we go. And this is the journey of Greek yogurt from farm to fridge. So it's a virtual field trip with Discovery Education. So it's through your Discovery Education account. And you can register your class and join in. And they're going to show, it's at Chubani. They're going to show how the, how the yogurt starts out in the cow and gets to the fridge. And so that might be a fun thing if it just happened to work out with your schedule. Um, because it is live. If it didn't work out, work out with your schedule, I'm sure that they archive it, which is very nice as well. Okay, back to here. And then this is another cool thing, this Google Glass. I'm sure you've all heard of the nerdy people um, using the Google Glass. But um, following somebody on a field trip um, on Google Glass. So here's an example. This guy here, and again, this is something that you can explore on your own later. It's a really fun video. Um, he's a teacher in Minnesota, and he got to go to um, the, I forget what this thing is called, uh, CERN, I don't know what it's called right now, sorry. I'm, I'm sounding like a dumb non-science person right now. But anyway, he went to this big thing in Switzerland, and... <laughs> And he was wearing Google Glass, and he connected with his brother's class in, back in um, Minnesota. And the kids were able to ask questions, and he was able to walk around and show them the different parts, just like they were, they were seeing it through his eyes and asking him questions right when it was happening. And then I could do a whole session on just the Google tools that they have for virtual field trips. And... Um, First one I'm going to share is uh, Google um, at the moon. So this is part of Google Earth, and you can actually turn on the moon layer. And this video here, which again, because of time, I'm not going to show you, but please explore, um, actually tells you how to see the different things and how that works in Google Earth. And then they have um, the Google Trekker. So we've seen the street view. Well, now they have um, the Trekker that's like a backpack. And so that they can go places that you can't go in a car. This is what I want to do for my next job. So very cool. So this is just showing how they're filming this stuff. And then I'm just and then this is an example of that, the Street View Trucker, and I actually had this in the in the little video. I mean, in our email this week, um, this uh, Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, I think is what it is, <laughs> in um, in Dubai, and they go and they show all the stuff that they can do there. A great field trip for kids. They can see stuff they would never be able to see, even if they went there. So. It's pretty cool to see these things. They also, um, they go, like here's um, up in the Arctic and they're um, learning about polar bears. So you can go up and you can see uh, what's happening up in the, in the region and learn and actually see how their space is getting smaller and smaller and what that means. Um, it's, a, it's a lot easier to care if, if you've actually seen it. So this is a way for kids to 
to see what's happening. And this is another Google tool. It's called World Wonders. And they they have all of these different places. And then what they've done is they've gone in and they've done Street View. So here I am at the, I believe, the Palace of Versailles. Yep. And I can walk around and see the, the different things. Just like you would do in Street View, but they've got it set up for... Um, lots of different places like the pyramids and Machu Picchu and things like that. Flying through here because there's just too much. Um, there, You can do a virtual tour of the White House. There's another thing called the Google Art Project which is similar but it's in art museums. So this is this particular one that I'm pulling up here is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. And you can actually uh, walk around the museum and see the different paintings and then actually get really up close and personal with the paintings in a way that you, you know, if you were actually in the museum, you couldn't get as close to the paintings. And, and look, and I, I like the, the Van Gogh example because um, you can actually, if you get, um, uh, you can get close enough to see the texture and all of that. So it's, it's very cool. And you can go through, the, you can go to the different places in the museum and see different things. And they've got lots of different museums to look at. Nope, nope, nope. That's not where I want to be. That is not where I want to be. Come on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too many things going on at once. Okay, and then, um, like I said, there's lots of Google tools. This one um, is also really nice. It's the Google, Google, sorry, Google Map Views. And if this pops up here in a second, you will be able to see very cool stuff. Come on. So in Google Map Views, they've used that street tech trekker technology. And you're able to um, see views all over the world. And you can see over here, uh, people have either taken pictures or it's actually, so here is um, um, Angkor Wat. And you can walk around here in Cambodia and see the different things. And um, you can see the different ones in different places. That's a great one. And I know I'm just flying through here. I would love not to have to fly through these things. So that's really worth looking at. The Street View Treks. Maybe the last one I'm going to be able to show. Come on. Street View Trex is really cool because it does things like um, it does the Great Barrier Reef and un so underwater and um, there we go the Galapagos Islands I'm getting very slow here for some reason I think I did a uh, too many clicks there we go We'll go back to that in a minute. And I think my computer is tired. <laughs> okay, I'm moving this over here because that is stopping on me. It's time to stop me. Okay. Um, not much time left, and I didn't show you everything, but again, I left you links so you could see everything. There's all my street views. This is very cool. This is Anne Frank's home hiding place. It will pop up here in a second, I'm sure. Tracy, are you still watching Belugas? So it actually leads you through and talks about the different places. Um, you go behind the bookshelf and you see what's inside. So here I am going inside. Sorry, my stuff is starting to really 
slow down. Okay. I'm not going to go inside because it's, you're just going to have to explore on your own. Go on your own field trip. Okay, and then this information here is just an example of some ways you could create your own um, your own virtual field trip that you wanted kids to explore, like Washington, D.C. is an example. And I've done, I've shared some examples, one in Glogster, one in Padlet, and one on a wiki, where the teacher put together the stuff they wanted their students to see and all in one place. And I'm finishing up here because it's time to finish up. I just want to remind you of our workshops that are going on this summer. And please make sure that you register. Um, this one here, the Library of Congress using primary source documents, we have two people coming from the Library of Congress to do this one, and they're going to have some really great resources, um, a lot of kind of virtual field trip kind of stuff to share with you. It's going to be all day long. It's a really great opportunity for a free workshop here in Mount Vernon, and so um, I hope you'll consider doing that one. All of these other two, others too, but they're me. So I'm kind of pushing the other one just to make sure that we have people in the class. But um, I know Eva's in here, and Eva's, I believe, and maybe Sharon, have been to um, a Library of Congress um, a workshop before. And um, everybody I've heard that has, has gone to one has said that they're really worth going to. And um, remember to do your reflection. We need those for clock hours. And I, I do read them, and I try to respond to them. I know Emily said last week I went too fast, and I responded with some help for her, hopefully. And then last week, next week is the last one, and we're going to talk about some just different ways to sh um, share and celebrate student learning with technology. So not necessarily technology learning, but just ways to, um, to share using technology. So that's next week, and I hope that you have fun exploring all of these different webcams and virtual tours and all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of fun to be had there. And enjoy with um, yourself and with your kids. Does anybody have any questions before we shut things down for the evening? I think everybody's too busy looking at belugas or something. Um, Okay, uh, the answer to your question is, Tracy, I, I will still be there, but if you don't have it, that's fine. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, Sharon. And I'll see you tomorrow too, Sharon. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. <laughs> All right, you guys have a wonderful evening and happy exploring.